Trouble in my church, trouble in my church. I have to grow sometimes, grow sometimes. Trouble in my church, my church. Have to grow sometimes, I have to grow sometimes. I lay awake at night, I lay awake at night. But that's alright, that is alright. Cause you know that my Jesus loves, He will fix it after a while, after a while. Trouble in my school, trouble in my school. I have to moan sometimes, I have to moan sometimes. Trouble in my school, my school. Have to moan sometimes, I have to moan sometimes. I lay awake at night, awake at night. But that's alright, that is alright. Cause you know that my Jesus, He will fix it. After a while, after a while, in trouble in my way, in trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes, I have to cry sometimes, in trouble in my way, my way, have to cry sometimes, I have to cry sometimes, I lay awake at night, awake at night, but that's so right. It's alright, cause you know that my Jesus, He will fix it after a while, after a while. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Once again, we've been blessed by the God of heaven who doeth all things well. We saw fit one more time that we're able to come together on this day in this place with the express purpose of worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. And for, and for that, brothers and sisters, you and I ought to be eternally grateful. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. The psalmist still records in Psalm 34 and verse 1. I bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Even in times of death, God is still worthy to be praised. As we know, we all uh, have heavy hearts at this particular time and the loss of our dear sisters on this week. In the passing on Friday of Sister Vera Carter. And on this morning of Sister uh, Margaret Clements. And we want to be prayerful for uh, the families. And we appreciate uh, just getting to know these sisters. And I know we all have had relationships with them uh, over the course of years. And then many years in some cases. Uh, we've been able to minister to both of the families throughout the course of this week. Probably over the hospital with Sister Carter three, four times this week and two on Friday. And I appreciate Brother Stewart going over every time. And uh, we had some saints uh, having some prayer time with them in their last moments, having some song services with them. And I appreciate the digs and the herds and uh, others who were able to be with them at that particular time. Um, I don't know if you realize it or not, but we all need each other. I think somebody was here that was saying not too long ago, it's hard to get through life without a good friend. Amen. Um, and we all need one another. Amen. We're grateful to God for all of his love, mercy, and blessings. And we're grateful to those who may be visiting with us. We want to let you know here at the New Haven Church of Christ, we make no bones about it. We want you to come to be with us again, again, and again. Amen, somebody. And we're grateful for all that God has done, all that God is doing. And we're also mindful of uh, the many things that we have in store and prayerfully that God will allow us to be able to do well. We want to be mindful we have the uh, Mother's Day Fellowship coming up this Saturday at 5 p.m. And sisters, uh, please sign up so that we can serve you adequately. Um, also appreciate the saints that were several who went out to uh, support the, the Nash family at the Northside Congregation on yesterday. We appreciate you going and sending your love. Uh, we appreciate those who were able to take the seniors out on yesterday. 
I heard they had a good time and eating and fellowshipping at the child of pot, is that right? All right, y'all eat pretty good, pretty good. Uh, and also, uh, I appreciate your prayers as you pray for my wife and I as we travel to the New England lectureship uh, to play a part in the things that they're doing there. We appreciate uh, your prayers there to receive the message as well. Uh, we had a great time and we're inspired uh, by the many things that are going on uh, in New England. For the business at hand, we want to direct your attention to Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians chapter three. We want to begin at verse number one. We'll terminate at verse number 17. All right. Colossians chapter 1, 3, beginning at verse number 1. Y'all don't mind reading the Bible, do you? No, All right. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then we shall also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death or mortify in your members which are on the earth fornication, uncleanness, passions, and evil desires, and covetousness, which is ultimately idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now, thank God for but now. But now you yourselves are to put off these things. Uh, anger and wrath and malice and blasphemy and filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, Holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. Y'all on the line? Y'all still out there? Amen. He said, if any has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, also forgive them. But above all these things, Put on love, which is the bond or the adhesive of perfection or maturity. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you also were called in one body and be thankful. Bible says in verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. This morning I want to speak to you from the subject. Can we all just get along? Can we all just get along? I don't know about you or if you realize it or not, the time in which we live, we're living in a time where many relationships are fractured. Relationships between mom and dad, relationships between parents and children, relationships even among siblings, relationships on the job, 
relationships, unfortunately, even in the church house. I see the thing crying out in the book of Colossians. Uh, the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Colossae to admonish them and encourage them to stand in the faith. He talks about refuting false doctrine in uh, chapters 1 and 2. And then he talks about in 3 and 4 the conduct and the living about the child of God. And he talks about how we ought to set our focus and our affections on heavenly things or things above and not on things of the earth. And we ought not walk like the world walks, but we ought to walk in the newness which is found only in Jesus Christ. He talks about how we ought to put off the old and then begin to embrace the new and walk in these things, living a life in balance, one that reflects Jesus the Christ. But I stop by to tell you, if you have a relationship that has been fractured, if you have a relationship that needs restoration, that thing cannot be bound together, separate and apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the love of Christ that helps us to forgive those who hurt us. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's the love of Christ that helps us to bear with folks who get on your nerve. Yeah. It's the love of Christ that, that helps us to overlook the faults of others. Y'all ain't saying that, but that's sure enough true. But when I look at the life of Jesus and his ministry, only loving in spite of how others treated him. The apostle Paul is, is, is admonishing the church here in Colossae. He says, guys, listen, I, I know that, that Christ is preeminent to all. And, and he talks about how we ought not get caught up in legalism. And, and, and st look, Christ is above everything. That's why I started talking about setting your affections and where it ought to be. And above, we're going to get into that. But, but let me tell you something. Look, Christ ought to be our life. See, some of you, I talk to you, it's, uh, uh, your favorite sport is your life. Our favorite hobby is our life. Our children are our life. Our spouse, that's my life. You know, all those things ought to be a part of your life, but they ought to be the sole existence of your life. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Because God existed before all of those things. Amen, somebody. And some of those things that you have, they may pass away. And you still have to exist even after they're gone. We need to get to the point in our living where we learn, especially children of God, that we have to learn to get along with others. I just believe there's still some relationships in our lives that still need to be mended. Sometimes as a child of God, you have to get to the point and be honest with yourself and say, you know what? I was wrong. I've let this go on too long. I could have forgave, but I just wanted to continue to hold that over them. But I'm so grateful God doesn't treat others like I treat. Hey, aren't you glad God is not like you? The Bible says his mercies are renewed every day. And you have to understand the relationship that mankind has with God. God being so benevolent. God being so kind. God being so gracious. God being so merciful. And us being his kids. And then when we don't extend it to others, that hurts God. That frustrates God. He said, how is it that you can call yourself a reflector of me and you're unwilling to forgive somebody over one offense? That happened in 1947 and you still haven't let it go. Can we all just get along? Back in the day, you know this gentleman here? Rodney King? Back in the LA riots at a particular time, he was the victim of police brutality. That was caught on tape. It was visual. And then after a press conference, they, they asked Mr. King, do you have anything to say? And he, he ushered out the tone, can't we all just get along? He was there just minding his business, and there were some cops who took things too far. Can we all just get along? Can we all just get along in our home?
Hey, Amen, somebody. Amen. Son and, and, and father at odds. You stick on one end of the house and the other end of the house. Y'all can't even greet each other. Y'all just grunt when you walk past. <laughs> Daughter and mother. Lord have mercy. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. And I with one another. But see, kids, you know that there's a time you still need to call on mama. Well, I, I know you're mad at mama, but then you say, Mama, can you do my hair? Mm -hmm. You forgot you needed that done before you got upset. Didn't you? <laughs> but, but there are some times that we go through conflict, even in the marital relationship. The honey done gone, gone over the moon. And your, 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 your marriage is like a stranded ship that's on the rock. But Jesus can get you loose. The Lord can mend any relationship that you have. But see, the key's going to come to the point whether we surrender to him or not. That's really what it's all about. And when I think about this week has been just a trying week for me personally, based on some things that, that I've had to endure and, and, and thinking about and thinking on my mind and, and, and being in the hospital back and forth with, with, with saints who've been, been, been just fighting for their lives and then seeing the result of the week, that stuff begins to wear on you. Yeah. And I was sitting up here count, counting, I was just looking and I said, man, this, after these two funerals, I would have done 13 funerals in two and a half years. That's a lot of death to look at. That's a lot of people they grieve. But then I think about also too sometimes about all the unsettled accounts that we have one with another. Life is too short to keep holding on to self. That's some things, brothers and sisters. I stop by the table. You don't want to carry it to the grave with you. There's some things, that, and sometimes the death of another, it, it reminds us again about our mortality, where we ought to be and what we ought to do. And we need to be mindful of this thing. There's some things we need to let go. There's some folk that we need to forgive. And there's some things we need to overlook. Hey, hey, Amen, somebody. I, I'm thank God. He said, well, how can I do that? Based on what they did. All you got to do is just look at God. You've been a member of the body, you told the Bible under your arm, you got it on your phone. It's stuff you know you're supposed to do and still fall short. Amen. But he still looks at us with his mind and his heart fixed on grace and says, one more day. Yeah. It's not based on us deserving it. It's based on his good nature. And see, I don't know about you, I, I got four, but when they're in conflict one with another, that doesn't make me feel good. I gotta step in. It, it pains a, a, a parent's heart when your kids are not. When your kids can't get along. Huh? Mama, I gotta visit your house when so and so not here. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I, I'm not talking about y'all situation, but your relatives. Hey, hey, Amen. Sometimes that's how it is. We can't be in the same room. We can't take up the same airspace. That causes conflict. And sometimes the same thing happens even in the body of Christ. When I was reading this epistle, it's almost strange that you would think he's talking to the church. How you ought not lie to one another. How you ought not be deceitful. How you ought not be vengeful. How you ought not be filled with wrath. How you ought not be quick to anger. How you ought not be living like the world that we were supposed to leave behind. It's amazing, but he's talking to the church. Yeah. He realized, but if you were uh, stitched and, 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 and a, in a vengeful nature and, and you had a hypocritical lifestyle and that you, you were always looking at the letter, you won't be able to maintain relationships. He says, why? Because folk will do you wrong sometimes. They're going to talk about you sometimes. They're going to promise to come through and not come through sometimes. That's part of our humanity. But then he talks about what we need to put on kindness and humility and forbearing one another and forgiving one another. You, you see all of that? See, these attributes, they'll help you to maintain even difficult relationships. But it comes to the point 
that he's talking about. He says, look, in order for us to show unity to a lost and a dying world, we got to come together. We got to be on the same page. See, you can't grieve the loss of one of your loved ones or one of the saints and, and then everybody crying and, and upset and then the next day you're back to being mean again. Well, morning's over. It's it. Now I'm back to my old self. He said, brother, you're not reflecting Christ. Sister, you're not reflecting Christ. That's the devil. And sometimes members of the body of Christ just need to be told, you're not operating like Jesus, regardless of whether you've been in the church or not. Well, I'm saying you acting like Satan's MVP right now. We don't hear that enough. And sometimes we, we got too many un Christians that's been unchecked for too long. It's like they meet everybody. They go off on everybody. They do that to everybody because they've been unchecked. Let me tell you something. You all you gotta always be careful about how you treat people. Huh? See, you don't have to worry about others. You got to be careful about if God moves you out of the way. Woe unto them who causes others to stumble. Huh? Because our personal pride and disposition, because I want my way at the expense of another. I don't care if they don't come back. I don't care. And see, you know that same mindset has nothing to do with Jesus. Because when you look at his nature, even when relationships are out of balance, he's always talking about reconciliation. Those are the pictures that he puts before us. He doesn't have the disposition, you, you don't look my way, I won't look your way. That's the world. That's not Christ. So I got several admonitions I want you to take a look at uh, this morning. We have time. Uh, we're going to do uh, part two tonight. We can't have unity until we die to ourselves. We can't have unity until we die to ourselves. Number two, we can't have harmony in Christ until we surrender our worldly habits. We won't be able to have harmony in Christ until we surrender our worldly habits. Number three, we can be unified if we embrace our new walk in Christ. We can become unified if we embrace our new walk in Christ. Christ would never, uh, the Lord would never require us to do something that we were incapable of fulfilling. But Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 that we ought to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You've got to struggle for it. You've got to strain for it. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because the devil always wants to get up in the middle of things. To separate those who used to walk together. Y'all all right? And see, if you're not careful, he can destroy a church. And then lastly, the key to lasting relationships is the love of Christ. That's the dynamic from verses 1 all the way through to 17. We're not going to have time to deal with all of that today. I just wanted to put that out there to you so you can come back at 5 o'clock because I know you love the Lord. Why y'all love it? Okay. So, right, seven key verbs that we're going to see throughout the dynamic of the text. Seven key verbs. In verse number one, he's going to say, seek. Seek what? Seek the things that are what? Above. Then he's going to say, verse number two, set. Set your affection on things above and not on what? Things of the earth. Then, uh, in the following verses, he's going to say about verse number five, mortify. That word means to put to death. Mortify your members. And then he's going to tell us what those things are. He's going to tell us to put off. It's an idea of an individual putting on a garment or wearing some clothes. He's going to tell us to put off. And then he's going to tell us to put on. Put off the old man and put on the what? New man. Right? And then he's going to say, let, let the peace of God rule. And then when you begin to think, well, it's a whole sermon right there. Man, what are you allowing to rule in your life? See, what rules on the inside will be manifested on the outside. Let the peace of God rule. And then he's going to say, let the word of Christ dwell. It is the word dwelling in you? See, when you got the word of Christ dwelling in you, you'll forgive a little bit more. You'll be quick to do it. See, you realize the detriment of holding on to something like anger that morphs into uh, uh, wrath and revenge and premeditation or uh, plotting. Y'all all right? 
That's why he, he made the admonition. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Seven key verses you'll be able to see. So you, you can uh, do this study on your own time. We're just going to hit a couple of these things. Notice what he said. Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 4. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. And this is a dynamic uh, a parallel to Romans chapter 6. And those who have been uh, bought by the blood of Christ by being baptized and submitted uh, to the Lord in baptism, we have been raised. He says, uh, we've been buried with him by baptism. He says, therefore, when, just like Christ was raised from the dead, verse number 4, by the glory of the Father, even so we ought to be raised to walk in the newness of life. That's Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. Since then, you've been raised with Christ. It's your members of the body of Christ. This is what you need to do. Set your minds or heart on things where? Well, what's our problem? What's, what's the struggle in our Christian living? We don't even look up anymore. We don't even focus on, uh, even in the heavenly disposition, we so focus on, on earthly things. Look, this earth, we're not going to stay here. This fleshly body going to go away. We have so many different manifestations that we're getting older. If there are reminders. When you when you when those aches and those pains, are, amen, somebody. Amen. Those, those gray hairs you keep trying to cover up, amen. Preach with me. Preach to myself. Okay. Uh, set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand, the place of authority. And then he says, uh, set your minds on things above and not on things of the earth. Where does our frustration come from? Where does our pain come from? Where does our anxiety come from? Things here. It's temporal. It's not going to last. See, we allow, man, with, with this, this boss said to you years ago, you would never advance. Your career is in my hands. That person don't have power? I'll ruin you. Man, but look, God, look, God was sustaining you before you got the job. You see how quick we're going to take our focus off the Lord and listen to what man says? Man will always want to live with you. You got to remember what God has said about you. He says, look, seek those things which are above. Set your mind. Look, give fixed attention to a task. That's the dynamic of set in the original Greek. Man, what, what's your mindset on? My own agenda, my own will, my own desire, my own time, my, 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 my. Is it the Lord's agenda, really? What's it all about me? After, after I get out, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I came to worship, but it, it, are you going to do anything else for God once you leave here? The rest of the day is my time. That's how we are. That's our mentality. We'll struggle if I preach an hour, but there's some of you who've already gone to the three-hour Avengers move. And you didn't even go to the bathroom. I'm not hating because I'm going to see it too. <laughs> but I don't mind. I know it's important. We struggle. You know what? It's just too long. But you're sitting and watch plenty of movies. You watch reruns. <laughs> Run to the bathroom. Hurry up quick. Trip trying to get back to where you are because you don't want to miss anything. <laughs> you see how we are? See, this is the key. When your mind is set on something, you'll find a way to get it done. Oh man, when it's important, what's important to you will be fulfilled. Even if you don't have a money, you'll find a way. You'll beg, you'll borrow, you'll, you'll use to sell, but no, you don't sell no more. You, you, you'll find a way. But when it comes to the things of God, I say, oh, how I love Jesus, but when he calls on me to sacrifice something, I'm always making excuses about why I can't. I'm too tired. Well, go to bed early. Well, now y'all looking at me like I said something wrong. <laughs> it's true. Well, I can't get the Bible class. It's too early. It's 9 o'clock. You got to be to work at 8.30. Right. And it's a further distance from the church. See, whatever you set your mind on can be fulfilled. Everybody has excuses. You can do Whatever you want to do. He told me, seek those things are above. Those heavenly things, those spiritual things. Set your mind. Where's your mindset? See, man, your mindset will determine your destiny. Okay. He says, well, Christ says, see, there in the right hand of God, uh, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died. 
And that watery grave of baptism, look, we're dying to sin, Satan, and self. There's some things that I have to be willing to relinquish. So that Christ can have room and reign in my life. For you died. That's what a part of that burial is. That baptism is a burial. That's something we all have. Man, I got to die to my own will and my own way. And when I come up, I got to start talking like Jesus. Thy will be done. Amen. But see what happens. We go, we go down with my will and we come back up with the same mind. Amen. Amen. It's all about what we trying to do, what we trying to fulfill, our own thing. Amen? Amen. What about the Lord? For you died and your life is hidden in Christ and in God. This reminds me, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Well, Christ, well, what Paul said, it's not me anymore, it's all about Christ. Huh? I, I, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not me anymore. It's all about the Lord. It's all about the Lord. But then when we go back and we dissect, you say, you know what, man, I renege on my promise to God. I ought to hang my head when I think about, man, all that the Lord provides me. Man, food, shelter, clothing. I got this I want. I got that I want. You got degrees. You got, you, you pray, pray to my children and say, they're safe. And things are working out. And even, even, you might not be where you want to be in life, but man, you still bless more blessings than other folk. Yeah. You ain't over in Sri Lanka when they dealing with all the, all this stuff that's going on in the world, and you're still walking in a vast way of protection. It's too much. Why I have to be this? Why I have to sacrifice this? That's why I'm dealing with church. Because they ask for too much. Man, man, look at Because the church asking you to teach. Because the church asking you to serve. Because the church asking you to help give away some food or give away some clothes or help these young people so they can have a better spiritual foundation or drive a bus or help the youth ministry or do something. Man, man, forgive the church. Because sometimes my mind is too much. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing it. See, it ain't about Christ. You might come to church, but it's still not about Christ. Because, see, he said we don't reflect him in our actions. That's not me being hard. We're just looking at the text, and we have to examine ourselves. Man, we got a few times out. I'm going to church. I was at service. But, I mean, are you, you coming because you want to be here, somebody forced you to come, and you didn't want them to call you, say. <laughs> See, that's an elementary mindset. He said, man, you died. Your life was hidden in Christ. It's not about me anymore. It's about him. And I have to learn in this Christian journey, in this walk, yes, it's going to take some time, but I have to relinquish more of me so I can make more room for God. I need the spirit directing me and not the flesh. Huh? What you reap, you will sow. Galatians chapter 6, if you sow to the flesh of the flesh, you're going to reap destruction. But if you sow to the spirit, he said, of the spirit, you'll reap everlasting life. We just talked about what the book says. Is that okay? Notice this, he said. Uh, Christ, who is your life? When Christ, who is your life? When I think about that and all actually, about who's your life? Sometimes there's some people. It's my girlfriend. You can't listen to your parents because you're trying to follow your girlfriend. You announce your parents. That boy, he got your mind. The old folks used to say, that, that girl got your nose open. Now, I don't know what that had to do with your nose, man. Don't you do anything. You say, can't listen to your parents. Get into I'll take the punishment for her. <laughs> what is it? That's all crazy. <laughs> Who is your life? I know the scripture say I'm saying I, I know the scripture say leave on the case I, I know but you don't know how fine he is with his servant but you know looking at him with his servant <laughs> <laughs> well he said move on preacher move on but, but see the dynamic is Christ who is your life he's supposed to be your life it's all about his will see when you honor him let me tell you something blessings don't come down the road See, well, that's why you need a man who loves the Lord because if he loves the Lord, the Lord tells him to take care of you and how to do it. Right. Right. Now, I don't want a man to take you. I just, I, just, I, I just look at whoever the Lord said. <laughs> man, you over there. You are the Lord. He said you somebody who don't have a regard for him. That's you. Right. Stop blaming it on the Lord. Talk the Lord put us together. No, that was you. <laughs> he just allowed it to happen. 
Okay, preacher, that's not in my notes. That's not. What I'm looking at is right on here, brother. I don't know why that's coming out here. But the Lord allowed it. That's all I'm going to say. Who, who is your life, church? Who is your life? Man, if Christ is your life, doing spiritual things ought not hurt you. Ain't hey, that somebody? See, because, because see, sometimes we're so carnal and we're so fleshly, we start getting upset even when I hear good things. Even when I'm instructed to do good things. Some of y'all are uh, on, on, on the biggest loser thing. I'm, I'm on the biggest loser thing. We're trying to lose some weight. We're trying to discipline ourselves. And this and that. We start talking to one another. I got to give up that. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, it's going to help you. Your numbers will be better. And you won't have the gout. And all that. All the other stuff that you have, but we start getting in there. What? What, what, what kind of thing is that? You trying to stop it? No. I'm just saying. That's what you just to get some more water in you and not eat out the aid and trying to go. What is this? I ain't being a part. Well, you ain't got, I mean, it ain't scriptural that you got to be a part of the big thing. I'm just saying, but if you want to be involved and you want the results, there's some things you got to deny you. No need getting upset with the organizers. That's too much. That's it. See, but that's how it is, man. When we driven by the flesh, who are you trying to get us to deny something for the flesh? It's the same thing in the spirit. The Lord wants too much. But see, we don't say that to the things we desire. Excuse me, sir, that I'm, that I'm interested in. Um, you, 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 so that, that guy that keep calling you that you like, you don't say he called you too much. You take me out to too many places. I'm gone too much. You never say that. You never say that. Where we going again? It's time to go. Start skipping. <laughs> but the flesh. But let the Lord call. All them people in there, somebody else need to be able to do it. We got cleanup coming up on the 18th. Well, you already thinking about it. Your excuse right now. <laughs> but that's how we are. That's how we are. Man, that's a call on disposition. But see, if Christ, is, if Christ is my life, what is it I'm not willing to relinquish? He laid it all out on Calvary. He's not asking me too much. He's demonstrated his love. We love in response to what God has already done. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. You don't love God because you're that good of a person. We love in response to what he's already demonstrated to us. He said, man, let me tell you something. You've got to let go of your carnality if you want to be pleasing to Christ or if you want to rectify some of your relationships. But see, some of our relationships will never be restored because there's some things we're unwilling to let go. You said, preacher, that's too much. I, I cannot let my rich and crackers go at 9 o'clock. I just can't do it. My ginger staffs with cheese, cherry tea. I just can't do it. That's some things, preach. I just can't let go. You talking about forgive somebody, overlook somebody. They said it was going to bring it, and they didn't. They said they were going to help, and they didn't. And they said, and hey, you still expect me to say hi at church to them, and I'm going to act like this ain't never happened? I, just give consideration to my, maybe what's going on in their life. But see, when it's all about you and your will, your own desire, things of that nature, man, we got to have a loving disposition one to another. See, when Christ is your life, there's some things you're willing to give up. But see, we, we got to come to the point. There's some things you have to be willing to give up in order to receive greater. Okay. <clears throat> Bible says, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also appear with him in glory. That's the consummation of all time. Now, Look at this. He says, set your mind on things above, not earthly things. See, your change your mindset. It'll change your life. See, everything starts in the mind. Whatever you're trying to discipline yourself to do, even eating. Eating is a physical manifestation, but everything starts here. Uh-huh. You gotta understand what your triggers are. There's some people you can't associate with, with when you're trying to lose weight. Huh? Because they always talking about, can okay, y'all ready to go out? Let's go. It's on me. Don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> that's not Jesus. That's the devil. That's, 
And, and sometimes I think my wife, she be working against me. She on another team. Like, hey, man, you want this? I wasn't even thinking about that. Hey, you, you were working hard today. I think she's working against her. I'm sabotaging her. <laughs> but see, everything change begins with the mind. Man, what you make up in your mind, is it can be fulfilled. But see, that's part of the problem. See, these things haven't been manifested yet because I really haven't changed my mind. But then I go to church. I've been going to church a long time. I've been saying the same. I've been to church practices. But you're still the same. You still got the same attitude. Somebody sit in your seat, you'll go off. <laughs> you still saying stuff like your seat. That's just when you say, we're creatures of habit. You can be falling all out over a, a, a chair that your name not even on. You know how crazy that sounds? Yeah, I said it. It's on tape. It is what it is. Because that's who we are. My way, my seat, my, my kitchen. He ain't your kitchen. He ain't building up in that kitchen. My kitchen. My. But see, you got to get to the point in ministry that you make room for other people. Because you're going to die and be gone one day. Yeah, you know, I got a nice office in there, but I ain't tripping about no all that. I don't. Man, there was somebody who was in it before I came. I don't know if somebody was in it. Wow, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that you? You're fulfilling a role. We, we take ourselves too serious. Right. And you think it's all about it? It's not. It's not. The church was here before you came. It's going to be here after you go. We're going we're to we're bury you. We're going to have a nice service. They're going to pass the chicken, have a prayer, go home, and start again. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking, I, I, I know. If people are going to say some good things, some they mean, some they don't. This sounds good. But that's how it's going to be. Life keeps going on. I don't know who that was for, but. Okay. Put to death, verse number 5 through 8. Put to death, therefore, what's earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire. Let these have a sexual connotation that's associated with it. Covetousness, which is idolatry. You won't stop it. You won't stop it. Nothing to get something that you see. I want it. I mean, see, if that's when your mind is set on the wrong stuff. When somebody else gets what you want, you can't be happy for that. Now you're mad, you're envious at that. They were fine when they didn't have it, but now they got it. Now, now you can't even speak to them. You got, we used to talk. We used to go out. We used to have fun. But nothing can happen. Right. And you see how that stuff is controlling you? Things. Junk stuff and things. Hey, you, you say, man, if I get this, I'm going to be happy. Man, if I get that car I want, I'm going to be happy. And then it's only new for a little while. Huh? That house, it's only new for a little while. And this stuff start breaking down. And the green stuff will get on your house if you don't have my car washing. It, it, uh, it, it was immaculate. It was beautiful. It, that dress, the new shoes, and then you don't wear the shoes, not a crease in them. Then you just look good for the moon. You walk in with your feet all balled up. You know what I'm <laughs> Some people do. Oh, that looks so nice. Your feet all broke up. <laughs> now you go to work the next day. I mean, this stuff happens. People do. We think stuff really got, it, it ain't important. Stuff is not going to make you happy. Look at Hollywood. Look at these athletes, man. Got all the money in the world. But stuff don't make you happy. They still doing drugs. They still committing suicide. And we desire more stuff. Stuff not going to make you happy. Stuff is not wrong to have, but then you got to make sure the stuff doesn't have you. He said, in these, you once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander one another. You're making somebody, and I also heard, we didn't hear that, you just wanted to put it in there. The folks were like, oh, really? And you just start adding other stuff. That's how people do. You've been playing telephone before. He said, an obscene talk out of your mouth. Ungodly talk out of your mouth. You would think he was talking to the world. But he's talking to the church. He said, it's supposed to be all about Christ. 
He's supposed to have our lives. And when he has our lives, our actions begin to change. We'll become more loving. We'll become more kind. We'll become more patient with one another. I'm just not patient. I'm just not patient. You're not reflecting Christ. That's all it is. No matter how long you've been here, surrender to him. That's what you need. You need a good dose of surrender. Somebody may not have told That's exactly what you need. I'm not. I'm not. You're talking about your old self. I've never been patient. But you're in Christ now. He can make you new. But you have to allow him to do that. Does that make sense? I don't have time to finish the verse. But come back tonight. We'll finish uh, that portion. But you need to come to Jesus today. You need to get to know him and develop a relationship with Christ. You want your, the relationships in your life to get better? You got to surrender to him. You surrender to God by hearing the gospel message, believing the same, repenting of your sins, confessing your faith in Christ, and being baptized for the remission of your sin. There's some folk in our lives right now. You say, you know what? I, I really do need to have a better relationship. You can change it. See, you can't change people, but you can change you. See, I'm not going to allow anybody or anything to get in between me and my relationship with God. Amen. Not my wife, not my kids, not my grandma, not anybody that's supposed to me. Not you. Man, listen, you, I, I, I ain't trying to get you to test me, but regardless of what you do, I'm trying to make sure I don't get so upset that I miss heaven over your actions. Ask Moses. We got examples in the Bible for that. We don't want it. There's some ways we don't want to go. But we let people let us fall all out. Yeah. When you heard what they said about you, man, people will always talk. That's human nature. Question, is it true? No, if it's true, why are you going to get that space with? They called you a name. Is that my name? No. I know my name, so I don't have to get offended by it. That's something. We, we're all broken up. We're out of fellowship. We're not in relationship. Man, that's some things that can be mended. If you call yourself the child of God, you got to make the first step. I'll wait until they come to me. It'll never be rectified. Allow Christ to work in you. If you've been here, you've been coming and saying, man, I, I got this and I got that. You can't do it on your own. See, all we were was the flesh prior to coming to Christ. You, you want to exhibit that love and that peace, that peace, peace the joy, the, the things that, that's exhibited as a result of having the Spirit. Man, you got to surrender to Him. Hear the message, believe the same, repent of your sins, make a change of mind, which then leads to a change of action. Look, you got to get to the point, say, you know what, I'm not just going to do my own thing. I'm going to surrender to the Lord. And that's a surrender you have to make every day. Some days are going to be better than others. Now, as you grow in him, there's some things you will relinquish that won't be the same struggle, but then new struggles will come up. But then you got to be willing to confess Christ and be willing to uh, say with the unit says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And be willing to be baptized in water for the remission of your sin. Why? Because that's what Jesus said. He said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not shall be condemned. And if you remember the body of Jesus Christ, and look, we all have to get to the point where we just stop going through the motion. Because funerals keep happening around us. And if your business isn't right before you press that dime pillar, you're going to have some trouble. And I'm crying out week in and week out. Let's surrender to the Lord. That this person, I'm not, I don't care. Let me just tell you, that's not a Christ. That's not a Christ. That's of the devil. It's not a Christ. It's of the devil. When he's your life, it's nothing you won't do. Just like it is when others in our lives for a period of time and they're our life, it's nothing you won't do. But see, Christ ought to take preeminence over any other person. Will you surrender to him today? We're about to stand and sing the Savior's invitation. If you want to be saved, we ask you to come down there. We'll baptize you today. You need prayer? Come on. What can wash away my sin? Jesus, that's a no.